Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams, and it's a privilege today to be joined on the summit by the head football coach at Southeastern, Coach Tyler Fenwick, in his third year with the program, second full season. Coach Fenwick, the second full season seems to be going well. 4-0 and is the start after a 31-10 to victory over Southern Nazarene on Saturday. Let's just start right there, Coach. Talk about the win, a solid win for the Southeastern Savage Storm. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, a, a, wins are always good. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's um, uh, you know, you take it one week at a time and, and um, you know, this, the, it was a tough, it was a tough trip um, being that it was a two o'clock start and, you know, it's kind of that distance where it's close enough where you can get up in the morning and go, but, you know, you're kind of crammed for time and you're really hoping that there's no traffic and all that stuff. So, um, you know, a lot of credit to our, our kids for, um, you know, being up early and getting on the bus and, and, um, you know, being ready to play. Um, and I think Southern Naz is a tough, it, it, they do some really good stuff. I mean, they, um, they make it really difficult on you and, you know, they're fast and they play really hard. Um, you know, they're not real big. Um, and so it's easy to kind of get caught up in that, but they, um, you know, we told our kids all week that these guys play hard and they do some things that really cause some problems schematically. And, um, you know, make you be very disciplined and, and, and fundamentally sound in, um, in what you do. So, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, it was a, you know, it ended up being a little bit uh, feeling like a sloppy game in a sense of um, just uh, penalties and, and um, you know, some, some minus yardage plays, but then we'd get some big plays. And so it just didn't feel like, um, you know, we could really get into a rhythm. Um, but, you know, being able to get the lead that we had at halftime and, and, uh, you know, and I think we probably felt a little bit too comfortable at halftime rather than coming out in the second half and, um, you know, finishing it off, um, which sounds, I mean, I, you know, we, we won by 21 points, which is a, you know, a good margin, but, um, you know, I just didn't think we played as well as we could have in the second half, but, um, but anytime you can come away with a, with a victory, especially on the road. And, um, I just, you know, two years ago when we went down there, I mean, I I just, it was kind of the same, um, feeling of, uh, just a tough place to play. Well, coach, and I'm sure a third of the way through the season, you still have no blemishes on the record. I'm sure there's a, it's a positive at least from one perspective to still have some things that are teachable moments. <laughs> so when you walk oh, yeah. away with that W that you, you have more things you can talk about with the team. Yeah, no, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, every week, um, you know, we've been able to come back and, uh, and say, okay, we need to work on this or we need to fix this, or this is what our upcoming opponent is going to present to us. And so this is how we need to handle it. Um, you know, we, we, um, I, I think, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to learn and get better and improve. And I think once you um, stop pushing towards, you know, improvement and getting better and settling for the fact that you've won games, then, then it's going to come back and and bite you in the butt. So, um, you know, we're always trying to find, you know, we're always trying to highlight, you know, the good stuff that we've done, but also um, pinpoint the things that need to, um, you know, that we need to be, uh, get you know, make improvements on and, and, and how we should handle situations and how we need to, you know, in order for us to be a championship football team uh, that we want to get to, um, you know, we build, we have to be able to handle a, a 24 to three lead at halftime and be able to get in and, at halftime and make adjustments and, and um, you know, and not just settle for that, but make sure that we're playing the, the full 60 minutes. And, and um, you know, so that's, those are things that, um, uh, you know, you have to address with your team each week. Coach, you're led right now by junior quarterback Dalton Hatley. He's passing for 264 yards per game, and and that's good enough to be in the upper half of the Great American Conference. However, that that number may be skewed just a little bit. An 11 for 20 performance on Saturday against Southern Nazarene, only 79 yards passing, but threw a couple of touchdowns, ran one in himself as well, and so seems like from a numbers perspective, he's doing well. Talk about your offense. Yeah, he is doing well. He's got a really good grasp of the offense. He understands the the um, you know the ins and outs of of uh, how things work. Um, you know, all the way down. I mean, you know, not just the passing game, but um, the protections and the run game and 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 all of it. So um, he's definitely a student of the game. He watches a lot of film. Um, he you know he watches you know stuff outside. And he watches a lot of NFL games and just studies the you know he just studies the game. Um, you know, so it's, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, um, 
you know, he, he can make every throw on the field. He, um, you know, he just, he's got a, just a good feel for where the receivers are going to be and, and, and making sure that he works throughout the week to get on the same page with those guys. And, um, you know, his numbers weren't, weren't, uh, great, uh, Saturday, although, you know, we felt like, um, you know, we were going to be able to run the football a little bit more than, um, you know, other games. And, um, we had some, you know, I think we had four or five, um, shots that we took down the field that, um, you know, ended up being pass interference calls that gave us some yardage. And, you know, we ended up having, I think we only ran 53 snaps on Saturday. And, uh, when you get a, you know, when we get a lead like that, you know, you're going to start running the ball a little bit more and, um, and really what's important is the fact, you know, just, you know, the win and, and, and it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's funny cause he'll say, you know, I'd like to, you know, I think, you know, get about 20 throws in and think we can run the ball this week. And, you know, and so he'll tell you, you know, and he, he's not about his numbers. He's not about, um, you know, throwing for a million yards or whatever. He just wants to, you know, have a good completion percentage and, and, uh, you know, get the ball in the end zone, however we have to do it. So, uh, which is a good, you know, really good sign of a good quarterback and guy, you know, team guy that, that wants to, you know, wants to see success from the, from the team. So, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, uh, um, you know, he can kind of, uh, get after guys and I think he's got the respect from, uh, from the team and, and from the receivers and, and, um, and they, they respond to him. We're speaking now with Tyler Fenwick here on the summit on Midwest sports net. Please consider subscribing to the channel here as we talk about small college sports and more. And we're enjoying a visit today with the Southeastern head coach, the Savage storm four and O on the season coach. One of the reasons you're four and O on the season is that you got a, a, a big win against a very tough Harding program. Got it at home 32 31. And what I wanted to ask about that is the fact that, you were ahead for a lot of that ball game. Harding came back as they do, and they're a, a tough offense. They're a tough out any way around. You get the touchdown near the end of the game, final minute, trailing 31 30, and you decide to go for two. Coach, what went through your mind then? I mean, that this is this is why at this point still the, the record has uh, no losses. Um, yeah, it's um when you play hard and you just, you know, that they're always, I mean, they're, they're, they can move the ball. They can move it quickly through the, you know, in the run game. Um, and if you can get them, you know, I, I, having the 14 point lead, I think, you know, helped us a little bit because they kind of had to, you know, they had to battle back and, you know, when they have a lead, it's easy for them to kind of run the clock and, you know, just make it a short game. And so, um, you know, but, but you just know that, um, you know, that, 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 they're going to have a chance to get back in it and they're going to do some things. And, um, you know, sure enough, they rattle off a couple of touchdowns and tied it up and then took the lead. And, and, um, but yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was that, um, before the series, uh, you know, our last drive, I think we had the ball on the 11 yard line and, um, Hatley Dalton Hatley. I mean, just, he was calm and he, it was like nothing rattled him and he just kind of went out and, distributed the football and moved it down the field. And, uh, before that series started, um, we had talked, um, uh, coaches about, you know, Hey, if we get a chance to go down and score and, and, um, you know, are we going to tie it up or are we going to go for two and just kind of having that decision in our head before we even got to that point, just so that we knew, um, and we already knew the play that we were going to run. And, and, and even, you know, when we huddled on the sideline to go out for that series, I mean, our quarterback, our players and our, and, and Hatley, our quarterback, I mean, they already knew, you know, like, yeah, we're going to go down and score. I mean, it was just, it was a little bit eerie in the sense that it was like, we just kind of <laughs> knew it was going to happen. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. It was just, they had confidence and, um, you know, they've been being able to move the ball in the, in through the air and, um, you know, with us kind of spread out, it kind of helped us throughout the game and, um, you know, it just, um, uh, so there was just a, a confidence that we were going to, you know, go down and score. And, and the guy, you know, and I told Atlas, I said, Hey, if we, you know, if we score, we go for two, so be ready. And he was like, yeah, I know, you know, I, I <laughs> you know, yeah, of course we are, you know? And so it was like, okay, I guess, you know, but um, so sure enough, you know, we got down there and, and, uh, and scored and it was um, I mean, there was no decision to be made. It was already made for us. And we were, uh, you know, going to go for two and, 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 you know, put the game away. And I, I you know, I, I think in a situation like that, um, I think we had confidence, um, momentum. Uh, we had a great crowd behind us that was, there was, it was electric. Um, 
and 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 we had a good play that we felt like um was going to work and um and then you know on top of that you kind of also you know the the offense that you're going against, um, you know, you put that, you put Harding's offense in the red zone and it, they're just going to pound it and pound it and pound it. And, you know, and it's hard to stop when they get down in there. And, and so, you know, it was like, well, uh, I mean, I think we just gotta, you know, let's just put it away so we don't have to get into that situation. And, you know, you, your, your defensive line and your linebackers are getting cut for 60 minutes and, you know, why go into overtime and, and right. continue that? Let's just, you know, let's, let's get out of here and uh, with a win. And, um, I almost actually called a timeout um, because I wasn't sure if they um, – I thought maybe they kind of sniffed out what we were doing. And um, and then I, when we motioned, I saw that they all, they went with it. And and thankfully, I didn't call a timeout. We just let it ride. <laughs> I understand that feeling, Coach. That's, just let it go. Let, let yeah. it go. And, and you would think with, with an offense like Harding, that's an offense that would just live for an overtime setting anyway. So Yeah. 32 yeah. 31 southeastern comes away with a victory in week two and now after week four southeastern four and oh and this weekend heading up against the only other four and oh team in the great american conferences southeastern will be hosting henderson state in durant coach a big matchup and i know they all all are but uh, you know at least i would think from a fan's perspective and someone who just enjoys football this is one of the bigger ones of the season um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's exciting to be, um, you know, in that, in that conversation of, um, you know, being one of the only four no teams along with Henderson and we get to be matched up and, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of football left in the season and, um, you know, this is just the next one on the schedule. And, and, and so just kind of the way it, it, um, it falls, but Henderson's a really good football team. Um, they've got a lot of weapons. They put up a lot of offense and a lot of points. Um, you know, their defense is, uh, they're fast. Um, you know, so we, we've got our hands full, you know, it's going to be a challenge. Um, you know, but it's, um, you know, I'll say that, you know, our kids, um, you know, coming off of the 19 season and where we're at now and having the COVID year, I mean, there's a lot of credit to, um, our players, um, you know, putting in the work and um, buying into what we're trying to do and, and, um, and just the process that we've gone through over the last two years to put ourselves in position, you know, or put ourselves in a, in a spot where people can talk about two, four and no teams playing in week, in, you know, week five. And that's, that's fun. And, and um, you know, and I think our guys have been pretty grounded and, and um, you know, kind of a week to week mentality um, where we're not, you know, not getting too far ahead of ourselves and, um, you know, we're just trying to play the best football that we can in week five. All right. Well, the Southeastern Savage Storm trying to go one and oh, then in week five against a perennially tough team in the Great American Conference, Henderson State. Coach Tyler Fenwick, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. We appreciate that. And and uh, congratulations, at least to this point of the season, on a, on a successful year. And we're going to keep on following the Savage Storm and success to all of you. Thanks, Joey. Appreciate it.